Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm honored to be the last uh, to have the last presentation in uh, in this uh, conference. And so, yes, of course. Uh, and I want to thank the organizers, Natasha and Misla, for for giving me a chance to present this uh, uh, data about the micro CD applications. Uh, I usually work uh, in preclinical pre imaging, so with animals, but uh, I met Nisla when then we started uh, to talk about applications of micro CT in uh, archaeological samples. So that what got me interested in uh, archaeology and paleoradiology. Uh, so just a, a little recap, maybe some, some of our audience do not have any experience with the micro CT or CT in general. So it's uh, the, the CT or computed tomography came from the word of Thomas and uh, Grafin from Greek, so to cut and to write. And the beginnings uh, are linked with uh, Gottfried Hansfeld. In 1975, he devised the first uh, CT device. In 1979, he got a Nobel Prize for this. So very short period because it's a quite a significant leap in imaging uh, and when we look at it it uses x-rays we can get much better images with the CT it uses a lot it gives a lot gives out a lot of more of uh, those to the sample or to the patient but you can get more better images and see what's actually going on the micro CT started, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 20 years after the first CT, and this is due to the technological advancements and uh, uh, because the sources got with the higher energy, we got sources with higher energy, better cameras as a detectors, and we, we could get more resolution with the micro CT. But in principle, the micro CT uses the same uh, technology as the normal CT, but we get uh, a benefit of a, a more resolution. I'll be sure of that later. The principle, as I said, is the same. You scan your, your sample from different angles and use the computer to reconstruct the data. The more angles you have, the better precise, the more precise is the uh, reconstruction of your sample that you, that you scan. Also with the advancement of technology, so actually we got a new technology with the CT, there were some, some uh, concepts that needed to be revised and the one was the uh, introduction of a voxel. So it's basically a pixel or a 2D element, so the voxel is in 3D because the CT technology is now we have images in 3D. Uh, the resolution of the device also uh, derived new uh, terminology. So we have a micro CT, we now even have a nano CT which can scan uh, objects at a resolution of nanometers, not just micrometers. And as you can see on the presentation, the resolution would be the difference between, let's say, two objects that they, are, they appear uh, as two objects, they are not blurred into one object. The same principle is uh, also applied for the micro CT or the CT in general. But we have the added benefit of a, three, a third uh, axis or 3D, so we are looking at this resolution in 3D. And most of the machines are isotropic resolution, so we have the same resolution in all three planes. Uh, just in a simplification, if we scan, let's say, uh, four objects at a resolution of 10 micrometers, we would see them as four objects. If we scale down the resolution, we would see less detail. If you go even if you go further down the resolution, then these four objects would appear just as one object. And here you can see the representation of a good CT scan and a bad CT scan. So not just the resolution plays a factor in good and bad uh, scans, but uh, with the low resolution you cannot see so uh, so much detail as you would want. Some differences between the clinical and the micro CT is in size, of course. Most of the CT scanners, uh, sorry, micro CT scanners are benchtop models, so you can have them in your lab. You don't have to have a separate room, uh, technicians working them, so it's much 
easier to work with them, but they are much smaller, so they are limited uh, via the uh, sample that you can scan on them. The resolution, MicroCT has a higher resolution as we, as we know, but it comes at the cost of a higher uh, radiation that is being applied to your sample. Uh, the source in the, in the uh, normal clinical CT you have multi-slice, now the more modern uh, CTs are multi-slice uh, detectors, so you have more, uh, more sources with more rows of detectors, while in the uh, micro CT you have only one source with one detector, and it's a cone beam, usually it's a cone beam uh, source, while in the uh, clinical CT you have a pencil uh, sources, pencil uh, shaped sources. And the last difference between the clinical and the micro CT is in the reconstruction. With the clinical CT, you virtually get the reconstruction uh, in real time. So, as it is being scanned, it is almost uh, at the same time it's being reconstructed. While for the micro CT, you have to scan your sample and then reconstruct it. You cannot see your reconstructed data right away as it is being scanned. Okay, so why to use the micro CT here? We have an image of a human femur, we have a rat femur, and we have a mouse femur. So as I said, I'm mostly doing preclinical imaging, but uh, for <coughs> archaeological, uh, from archaeological standpoint of view, you also have some some smaller samples that you want to see a better resolution of, and that's why where the micro CT comes in play. Here we see an example of, uh, this is a rabbit mandibula, and you can see it with the resolution scanned on the CBCT with a resolution of 250 micrometers, how it looks, and it's the same sample with the micro CT at 18 micrometers of resolution. So the level of details, for example, in these, uh, in these uh, areas where you have trabecular bone is night and day and you can do some quantifications of the micro CT while with the CDCT you can only do some, some presentational work and uh, images. Also when using the TQCT for example we have uh, a big difference in details of the, of the trabecular bone and with the micro CT the, the ultimate goal and why it was created is for you to get some quantifiable data especially with these smaller smaller objects. So for example, on this image, you could quantify the trabecular bone, while with the TQCT, you could get some estimate, but not actual data. And for example, the cortical bone even, as you can see here, you could, you could analyze the porosity, while in the TQCT images, this is, this is virtually impossible. Okay, so this is the device that uh, I have currently in the lab. It's, a bit older device, but we are hoping to get old school. Yeah, we are we are hoping to get a, a new one, uh, and it has a resolution of up to nine micrometers, so we can scan uh, at a high resolution. Uh, there are other models and other manufacturers that are making micro CT devices nowadays. Uh, they are similar in construction to to this one. There are some downfalls and, uh, of micro CT, and one of them is, as, as I said, the, the sample size. So you cannot scan very large samples. For example, human femur would not fit, not just because of the length, but also because of the width. And actually, the, the head with the, with the neck protrudes too much for it to, to manage. So we cannot fit it in the machine. Uh, also, the length of the machine is limited to, let's say, 20 centimeters. So, uh, I've tried to scan human femurs and uh, tibias, but they cannot fit in the machine. But for example, the fibula and the ulna could fit, radius of course, they could fit uh, well within it. Uh, so the only problematic samples are the skull, if it is a whole skull, not, not if you don't have any fragments, it's, uh, it's a problem, and uh, large uh, long bones, so humerus, femur, TV. Uh, and uh, another problem with the micro CD, or no, I wouldn't say problem or limitation, is that it, uh, since it's a high energy source, 
you cannot scan, uh, or I mean, you can scan, but you cannot get good details with the uh, soft tissue. So soft tissue is virtually one big blob, and you cannot get any any details in it. But for for bone imaging, it's uh, quite well. There are some parameters. Of course, the, the, the ultimate object, uh, ultimate goal of the micro CT is to, to quantify something, and you can you can get good details, and you can do some volumetric analysis. You can do also uh, trabecular parameters since the resolution is quite well. Uh, some advanced porosity analysis also when the resolution is uh, quite well. And uh, there are other parameters, for example, uh, Fabio had uh, a talk about moments of inertia, and you can also uh, quantify moments of inertia using the micro CT. So these are some use cases for archaeology for the micro CT. And for example, I, I've uh, isolated some, some paperwork that reflects on this. And for example, some con congenital defects could be detected. Uh, this is a, a group from Croatia. They they uh, uh, they uh, uh, found that some congenital syphilis uh, causes alterations in uh, teeth, and it was in in Croatian samples. So that was that was quite interesting. Also, uh, in bones that are not long, long bones, for example, the talus bone is quite well. Uh, Worst for it, so you cannot you can analyze and get a good uh, sex determination regarding on the size and the shape of the of the surfaces and of, uh, for example the, the trophea or or uh, other other uh, parameters and you can you can get a good estimation if this bone uh, is uh, of uh, female is is it from a female or from a male. And quite recently, we uh, scanned also some samples uh, of the talus bone, and I think this paper is now in, will be published re hopefully sooner than later, uh, in which uh, the authors uh, made uh, uh, let's say an algorithm, so you don't have to measure everything, but you can just put in a, a in this template, and uh, the software will tell you if it is from a male or a for, from a female. Also, from for some traumatic events, the fracture repair can be uh, very well uh, seen and visualized, and you can you can characterize the bone callus, so you can determine if it's the, the fracture occurred anti mortem, peri mortem, or post mortem. You can you can do this quite well. <clears throat> uh, so metal particles within the bone can be visualized also. Uh, the metal diffracts X-rays much more in a much more extent than the bone. So there you have to apply some, some clever uh, optimizations during the scan and, uh, and during the reconstruction to avoid the uh, artifacts uh, such, as, such as this from, from metal particles. But <coughs> you, can, you can clearly see uh, if, if the scan is good, you can clearly see the uh, the object, the metal object, is integrated into the into the bone. So this osteointegration is it? Did, did the bone occur? Did the bone resorb around the metal particle? You can you can even quantify this. And there is a paper I found in, from 2015 where they found uh, an arrow embedded in a vertebra, so in a in a, uh, a body of a vertebra, and uh, they found that this person, so the bone healed around this arrow, and they found, so you can see the, the data where it healed, so it, it integrated into the vertebra. This person probably endured some pain, but he was alive after this traumatic event. And they even managed to reconstruct the shape of the arrow that was within the bone without destroying the sample. So that's, that's quite, uh, quite good. Uh, you can also quantify some defensive or lethal wounds, for example, cuts on the bone. You can you can visualize them and analyze the depth, the shape of the uh, of the cuts, or in uh, for example, in the skull. So the, the skull is fragmented, uh, and you can you can scan each fragment by itself, not not the whole skull, but you can see. I don't know. 
you probably see it. So you can, <laughs> you can see some wounds occurred in the skull and they can be, be quantified. Also for disease uh, identification in, in bones, usually it's uh, arthritis. So you can, you can uh, analyze this and uh, identify it. For example, in this paper, they, they identified the gout induced arthritis in, in uh, metatarsal bones. So uh, it's quite well uh, versed for this because it has a higher, the micro CT has a higher resolution, so you can use it to, to quantify the analyze. And uh, one thing that I hope we will, we will manage to do this is uh, to, to analyze teeth from cremated remains because we, we scanned a lot of teeth and we, we did this couple of years, maybe not now, more, five or six years ago, and uh, I hope we will get some uh, some meaningful data out of this. But so when when you when you hit the teeth, you get cracks within the dentin or enamel, and uh, for this we scanned uh, bones from archaeological site, and we 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 can see the porosity occurred in the root canals and around the root canals, and we can quantify this. And get some some meaningful data, and I hope we will we will finish this uh, because we have I don't know around one one hundred teeth that were scanned, and I hope we can we can uh, put this in a in a publication published on comics. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so uh, one one case. So I, I think I have two more slides. Is to look uh, the micro CT as well as with the, with the CT, we can look into unwrappable samples. So if you have a sample that's that it's, it would be a, 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 a pity, or or you uh, you cannot open it without destroying it, the micro CT here comes into play. So for example, in Egypt, uh, they mummified also the animals during burials of, of uh, people. And here we see a bird that was wrapped and mummified and uh, at the, when it was scanned with the micro CT, the good details of uh, bird anatomy can be visualized and even quantified. Also here we have a, in the same tomb, we have a snake that was also buried and mummified and buried with the, uh, with the actual uh, person. And uh, the, the skeleton is uh, very, very well preserved and it was visualized using the micro CT. And in my, my last slide, this one uh, was the most impressive uh, feature and the most impressive display of the power of the micro CT is where they were able to retrieve text on a scroll that was virtually unwrappable. So they scanned this scroll and managed to digitally or virtually unwrap it and read some text. Of course, some, some lines of text were lost, but uh, authors in this paper, they managed to, to get some, some text. So here you can see uh, this text and it looked like this. So uh, on the, on the uh, micro CT, on the cross sections, they were able to differentiate different letters and using the sophisticated computer uh, technology, they were able to unwrap uh, virtually this scroll and manage to get uh, some parts of the text. So some uh, highlights of the micro CT that enables uh, great resolution with advanced parameter quantification there are some shortcomings regarding the sample size, but others there is virtually none, uh, and it's suitable for a lot of types of samples. So, yes, it, it, as if you can fit it in the machine, you can scan it, and it's uh, technologically advanced, and now it's becoming more and more available, and because the micro CT uh, machines are not so expensive anymore, so I think there are a lot of uh, micro CTs across uh, the scientific community that can be uh, used. And of course, it's a great addition to the archaeological research. Okay, thank you for the attention. Thank you so much, David. Uh, definitely a very, very uh, interesting tool, and I'm 
sure that there will be more and more uh, application of it in archaeology and uh, bioarchaeology. Any questions or comments? Okay, so, yeah. uh, 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 we have scanned as well, uh, uh, it should be a lizard or a sparrow for an ecological museum. Uh, your uh, friend Tia scanned it before, before you, but we never published it as well, so we have time. Yeah, we have some material, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we can conclude uh, then the third uh, conference. Uh, anyone from, from the audience, from the online stream, uh, you can send us uh, messages through email afterwards. Thank you all for coming from uh, all parts of the Europe. Thank you, Darko, for organizing uh, this event and hope to see you soon again.